Okay guys, so in this third video on assembly drawings, we're going to take a look at some of the steps and things we need to consider when making an assembly drawing. So we're going to use this same example to start off with here. So the first thing to consider when making an assembly drawing is, since it's not necessary to define how each part looks, it may be possible to use only one view to represent the assembly of our device. So this is because the person assembling it should hopefully already have all the different parts required. So we would omit this view here. So this is similar to detail drawings and the fact that we use as few views as possible and even more so with assembly drawings because you can get away with even less views than you would have thought so for this drawing we obviously get away with just having one single view. So the next thing is we use sections extensively. So a lot of the devices or objects that we are considering will have hollow sections or some internal features which means the use of sections is very very important. When using sections we need to make sure we section different parts differently so we have a change in line spacing or direction for adjacent parts. As you can see here we've got several different sections each of which has different direction for their hatching. So here we've got hatching going up along this way, here we've got hatching going this way and on this diaphragm we have a smaller gap between the hatching compared to this part 6 here. Many parts we look at in our assembly drawings are not sections, so solid parts, so things like our nuts and bolts or any pins and keys or other little things that might be a part of our assembly drawing. So generally objects that we know the inside, what the insides of are like and you can look this up in the drawing handbook. It lists what sort of objects we do and don't section. And in this example, obviously here, you can see that our screw, which is threaded, has not been sectioned, even though we seem to have this cutting plane coming right down the center of our object. So if we had sectioned this screw, it would not be providing any useful detail and it is more useful to see it in this unsectioned view. So we also haven't sectioned our diaphragm support. However, we have sectioned the diaphragm itself because it's external and it looks better this way. So our next point is we number parts in an orderly way. So you can see here we've started with one here and we go one, two, three, four and then over here we have five, six, seven. So we have a anti-clockwise fashion as we have listed our numbers here. Now the reasoning behind this is because if you think back to our example from the previous videos where we had up to 30 parts and we want to look up where one particular part is from our part list. So we have the part number and then we have to find on our drawing where is part say 15 if the numbers are just all over the place with no real order to them, it could be time consuming just to find that number. So with this method, we can go to the rough area where, you know, if we see 17, we can look there and 15 should be in also the rough area. So just a few things for when we're doing this numbering. So we have our number and we enclose it in a circle. We then have a leader that comes out to the part and it is normally terminated with a dot or an arrow. So you generally choose to use a dot or an arrow and not use a mix of both of those. So in this drawing it we have gone with using a dot. So one other point is we try not to cross these leading lines so we have things going up on a diagonal but try not to make sure that these lines don't intersect each other. Next thing uh, no dimensions unless they are needed for the assembly purposes. So this is what we discussed in the last video where we added in a dimension 
to show the spacing be between um, well they're not in this one the nuts aren't in this one so that's like what we discussed last time where you might have a dimension to show a sp certain spacing required in the assembly of our two parts between each other finally we include a parts list in the lower right hand corner uh, the parts list is listed upwards so we have number one starting at the bottom here and then we go up to number seven here uh, we have the number of the item number then we have the description then we have drawing number and material so sometimes these are combined into one column however you can also have them separately and then we have the quantity of each of these parts if you've got multiple types of the same part so you might have seven m10 nuts you would put seven next to your m10 nut description so now let's take a look at our clamping device from back in the first video so the first thing is we have this part here so part number three which is a cap screw and it hasn't been sectioned so we've gone down through here but we've left this unsectioned and we have two of them so from having the device or the parts in front of us would see there are two holes for two of these screws to go through so we also haven't sectioned this part here part number five which is a pin which allows for this handle to pivot so it's part of a pivot system we also have this part number seven which is our stop it also hasn't been sectioned and you might just note on here we have this cross here and if you looked up that in your drawing handbook that represents that it is a flat surface which compared to this other non-section part here which is a buffer it is actually a round surface so that little cross that's just a little detail you might want to note for when drawing and that's in your drawing handbook we also haven't sectioned our spring here as from sectioning it we would gain no extra detail and sectioning it's just tedious extra work so another thing to notice is the difference in hatching between different parts so we've got here we've got three parts all touching together and you can see we've got different styles of hatching so different line so different gaps between the hatching and different directions to indicate that we're looking at different parts there we've got our parts numbered numbered and we've listed them and we've ordered them in a logical fashion so we've got one two three four five and then down the bottom six seven eight nine ten eleven so it's different to our last example where we had them anti-clockwise but that being said looking at this we have still laid them out in a very logical and easy to follow fashion so we have also have our parts list and we have ordered it starting at one at the bottom here then moving up to number 11 here which is our buffer if we look at one of our parts we've got enough detail here so it's a diameter 12 spring washer made of spring steel we need two of them there's enough information in that description to go out and purchase one of those and the same goes here for our M12 thin nut made out of mild steel we need two of those so once again there's enough information provided in our parts list list to purchase these parts so on here it's also good to note we have also included the scale so you might have noticed we haven't included a projection system and that's because we've only got a single view and it's not needed it's you can't tell whether or not it is a first or third angle projection so we don't need that so that finishes up everything we need to discuss with assembly drawings